So we've all seen the press pictures and the press releases of KTM's Super Duke 1390R, but today I am here at KD Motorcycles in Accrington and we are going to get up close and personal with this beast. So if you're interested to see it in lots of detail with lots of close-ups, then keep watching. Before we get into the ins and outs of this bike, I have some amazing channel news. Now for 2024, I have teamed up with the lovely guys at KD Motorcycles in Accrington to provide you guys with reviews on KTM's, Kawasaki's and Royal Alloy motorcycles and scooters. So there's going to be a huge variety on the channel this year and it feels great to have the support of KD Motorcycles. So if you are in the market for any of those bikes then do contemplate using these guys first because they are a great team and I'm excited to work with them for 2024. So without further ado let's get into this video and talk about this mighty beast. The Beast has just evolved. Like with its predecessor, the 1290 Super Duke, there are two models available, the R and the Evo. Today we focus on the R model, which is available in orange or black, starting from £17,999. The Evo is the same as the R, with the added benefit of electronic suspension. Prices for the Evo start at £19,599. Taking a look at the engine, for 2024 we do have a fully revised LCA engine featuring shift cam technology and producing 190 brake horsepower and 145 newton meters of torque. With these figures combined with the weight, it means it flirts with the 1 to 1 power to weight ratio accolade. If we look at the hardware for the front suspension, the R boasts upgraded 48mm split function WP Apex open cartridge forks with fully adjustable compression, rebound and preload settings. On the rear, the R makes use of a fully adjustable WP Apex shock with a manual preload adjuster for ease of use. A clear way to differentiate the R from the Evo is the emittance of the adjuster on the Evo, along with a blue plastic band on the forks, and of course the tops of the fork cartridges look visually different on both. For brakes we have four piston Brembo Stylema monoblock calipers, gripping a pair of 320mm floating twin discs, then on the rear we have a two piston caliper teamed up with a 240mm rear disc. It now has a very aggressive design with a new tank, winglets and a rather divisive headlight. The tech in the headlight is actually quite clever with sensors used to give you optimal light for the conditions. It also has a returning home light which stays on a few seconds after your ride is done. Right, we're going to talk about the seat height and the weight of this bike. So, as you guys may know, I am a 5 foot 4 individual with a 29 inch inside leg measurement. This has a seat height of 834 mil. So, if we see what it is like for me to sit on it. Now, first thing to mention, the seat is rather wide. If we take it off the side stand, as you can see, for me to have both feet down, I am on my tippiest of toes. Now you guys know that having both feet down on a bike doesn't really bother me all that much, else I'd be very limited as to what I can ride. But if we just scotch the bum over slightly, we can get a flat foot on the ground. Now I'd imagine that the preload is wound quite high on this, but if we softened it up a little bit, I'm sure it would make life a bit easier. When I took out the 1290R, Lamb Chop Rides had had it before me and I had a fiddle with the dial and it made it much better for me with a lot less weight than Chopsy. The weight of this bike is a reported 213 kilograms wet, which is quite respectable given the amount of power and torque that this bike has. So, at KD Motorcycles, they are fortunate enough to have a 1290R in as well as a 1390R. So, I figured I would line them up next to each other and we can really have a look at the differences. Now, the 1290 that you see at the forefront of the screen 
is probably one of the you know last remaining ones that they have these bikes are on mega offers at the minute and when they are gone they are gone so we do have this which is a carbon spec super duke r it basically comes with the full carbon panel kit carbon graphics kit as well as that akrapovich exhaust which i'll show you in a moment now the bike should be just shy of twenty thousand pounds but they have it up for just shy of 17. but we're going to look at it in detail and just see how these two beauties compare Okay, so from the front, you can see that they both keep their ridiculously aggressive angular pieces of fairing. On the new 1390, we have a slightly different design on the front that almost ties in the R, which I've just noticed in the graphics, which is pretty cool. So that 1290 that you see was the blue and orange version, but of course it's much more muted now with that carbon kit on. So you've got a carbon mudguard at the front, you've got the carbon panels with the graphics kit on there, you've got the tanks around, you have the rear hugger and the chain guard which is all carbon fibre, as well as on the tank now that is carbon fibre as opposed to just plastic. So visually the engines look very, very similar. You can see that the engine casing though is a bit different on each one. The one on the 1390 now is black as opposed to like a pewtery grey. So I can imagine much easier for colour matching if you were to ever scratch it. On the 1390R you can see the winglets that are attached to the rad and the fairing. Very, very discreet because they are black. It's almost like an illusion that they're not there, which is a real nice detail. So straight away we can see that the headlight is extremely different. Please let me know which one you prefer in the comments below. I know everybody was shocked when the 990 Duke was released with that headlight and this shares the same one but honestly when you see it in person it is actually pretty spectacular. The 1390R to me just looks like it's got bigger shoulders. It just seems chunkier at the front, especially with those wings that come down. So to look at the tanks of the bike, they do look quite similar. However, the 1290R does have a 16 litre tank and the 1390R has a 17.5 litre tank. So somehow they've managed to fit more fuel in there at a larger capacity, which should be good when trying to get more miles out of the bike. Now it's a bit of a hooligan bike, so you're not going to get mega miles. They're claiming that you could get 180 miles, but let's be honest, with a, an excitable right wrist, I don't think that's an achievable figure. <laughs> but yeah, the bars are supposedly lower on the 1390R and KTM suggests that it is just uncompromisingly sporty. Yeah, they do say it's still comfortable, so the proof for that will be in the pudding in the test ride. We've got different rubber for this year on the 1390R. We have the Michelin Power GPs, and if we look at the Super Duke 1290R, we have the Bridgestone S22s on there. Again, it'll be interesting to see how the OEM rubber does perform on test rides because they look pretty aggressive. If we look at the front, you can see that the indicators have been raised higher on the 1390R, probably due to regulations with how far away they have to be from the headlight, which has been redesigned. The headlight saves 700 grams compared to the 1290, so there is quite a lot of weight saving to be had with the headlight. The indicators are also a bit more boxy on the 1390R. And then if we look at the rear of these bikes, we have a rear light on the 1290, but on the 1390, they've done away with that rear light and they have that rear light integrated within the indicators, very much like what you see on the 1290 Super Duke RR, which KD Motorcycles actually has one in stock and it's staring at me and I want to buy it, but I'm trying to behave. The dash visually is very similar on both bikes. We have a five inch color TFT display. However, with the 1390, you do have improved graphics on there and it's very much taken from the Super Adventure S. We do still have a keyless system on the 1390 that we had on the 1290. However, we do have an extra touch 
where you have to press a button on the keyless fob in order to switch it on basically. It's a bit of a theft deterrent which I think is a pretty good idea. The switch gear is quite similar between the 1290 and the 1390. Another little bizarre thing that I noticed were the grips. On the 1390 they're actually quite slim whereas one of the things that I noticed when riding the 1290 were that the grips were quite chunky. Whilst the 1290 and 1390 do share a lot of technology, we do have a few added extras with the 1390. For example, you can still get the tech pack for £850, which includes motor slip regulation, a quick shifter and auto blipper, adaptive brake lights, the track pack, and a new feature which is engine brake control. That gives you five levels of engine braking to tailor to how you like to ride. And then you can buy a track pack, which costs £450, which includes launch control, MTC, engine map selection, a new feature of telemetry. We have a lap timer, a track mode, performance mode, and a anti-wheelie mode. Although anti-wheelie is not a new concept on the Super Duke, we can now tailor the degrees of wheelie with five stages, which just gives you added customization on top of what you had with the 1290. Well guys and girls, I hope you have enjoyed that in-depth look at KTM's 1390 Super Duke R. It was awesome that we had a 1290R in the showroom as well for a little bit of comparison. Now, if you've enjoyed this vlog, please consider hitting the subscribe button. It always helps and I'm forever grateful. And until the next vlog, take care, ride safe, and I'll see you guys then. Bye.